two parents, six kids, one dog, a camper named Ruby, and a car named The Beast. Distance learning across the USA and interviewing interesting people we meet along the way. This is the Ruby Road Stage Tour Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Ruby Road Stage Tour Podcast, where we interview interesting people we meet along the way while we road school across the USA. Now, the people we interview are from all walks of life, yet they have one thing in common. They are all following their road and creating the life that they truly want. My name is Carmen Ventrucci, and today we are joined by the one and only Michelle Thompson. So Michelle has a very wonderful story. She is a wonderful person with VAs. She has a a business called Awesome Outsourcing. I am one of her clients. She's done wonders for my business and freed up my time, and I am so excited to have her here on the show. So Michelle, welcome. Thank you so much, Carmen. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So Michelle, just tell, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. The biggest thing that people usually want to know is five years ago, I had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And um, when that happened, life pretty much stopped. Um, I wasn't able to uh, read or write. Um, My math went down to about a second grade level. And I had my MBA in finance. So that was a pretty big discrepancy that happened overnight. And uh, so over the next couple of years, I had to learn how to um, automate and delegate the majority of my life. Awesome. Talk about a learning curve and learning by necessity. Yeah. Yeah. So Michelle, the stage is yours. What do you want to talk about today? All right. My favorite talk it. Let's talk about um, automation and delegation. I love it. We all need a little automation and delegation in our lives, don't we? Yeah. So I know you you told us why you you learned how to automate and delegate so well because you had the stroke and because it was a necessity. You had to. What was your biggest lesson in automation and delegation? Honestly, that 90% is better than 100%. Hmm. And that doesn't make any sense at all until I explain it. Um, What I was the type of person that before the stroke, nobody could do the task as good as I could. And so even though it took me five minutes, I was just going to do it myself because I didn't want to spend the time to tell somebody else. And then I was going to get it back and I didn't like it anyway. And so I was just going to redo it myself. And, um, I had to let go of my perfectionism and realize that 90%, if, if I can get something done 90% of, if I would have done it myself, so it's not a hundred percent guess what? I didn't have to do it myself. And I got all that time back and all that freedom back. And so I think that was the biggest thing was to give myself permission to not have to be 100% perfect and realize if I can hand it off to somebody else and get that time back, 90% is good enough. That is a huge lesson. And you know, that's one thing I've had to learn myself as well. I kind I kind of like control. I, um, Control and I are really good friends. And so I think, I think all of us that are entrepreneurs are like, we don't want to like let go. I know. And, and it's it's been crazy. Like, and finally I had to realize that done is better than perfect. And guess what? I'm really bad at some things. Like I'm bad at doing websites. I'm really bad at doing websites. I my mine is horrible. I just hired somebody to help me with it because it's just horrible. It's not my zone of genius. And by automating and delegating and just getting rid of stuff you don't need, it helps you work in your zone of genius, whatever that is for you. So you want to hear a funny story about that? Yes. So I was stubborn and decided I was going to make my own website Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to um, drop the change to have somebody else do Mm -hmm. it. And I bet you, I, I sat back and totaled up the hours. I bet I spent 200 hours on it's still not that great. 200 so hours. Wow. If I would have taken that 200 hours and turned it into working with clients, mm-hmm. holy cow, mm-hmm. <laughs> I like exactly. the opportunity cost that I lost mm-hmm. by making myself do it <laughs> was amazing. <laughs> well, let's talk about that for a minute because correct me if I'm wrong, when you're working with your clients, I'm getting, I'm guessing you hear the objection a lot of, oh, I can do it myself and I don't want to spend the money on it right? And what people might need to realize is that it's worth spending the money if it frees you up to do something else. 
Yeah. And I think it all comes down to a very simple math equation. Like if we're going to pay somebody $15 an hour to do this task, but it gives me three hours back. Can I then take that three hours, work with a client and make a hundred dollars? Right. And if the answer is yes, then it's a no brainer, right? right? It's just a cost of doing business. But if the answer is no, um, I don't have enough clients, then you're not ready to outsource yet. You got to hustle a little more. Mm -hmm. Um, but so many people get so stuck in the groove because they're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making money and, but I'm wearing all these hats and it only takes five minutes. And I just don't want to take five minutes to explain it to somebody else. I'm just going to do it. And what happens is they do that so many times that it ends up being hours and hours because it's not just, uh, the time that it takes. It's also the brain capacity that you're losing. Right. Right. Because when you're, you're switching back and forth from tasks, right. Let's say you're, you know, copywriting an email, right. And you're like in the zone, right. And then the kids come and they slam on the window and they're like, Hey mom. <laughs> and you're like, hi, what the heck was I writing? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and that, and, you know, as you know, I know a lot about mindset and how our brains work and function and the decision fatigue is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And so any decision you can eliminate or just put on autopilot helps yep. you with that. Like even hitting snooze every morning is a decision. You decided yep. to sit there and hit snooze. And so I've heard stories of like, I think it was Mark Zuckerberg wore the same, no, did he order the same lunch or he wore the same thing every day? I forget. But you hear a lot of stories of things that- He wore the same t-shirt. Yeah, he wore the same like, t-shirt every day because it's one less yep. decision he yep. had to make. And so you hear things like that and you, you might think, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Isn't variety the spice of life? And for them, it's like, no, it's helping me clear my mind so I can make the, de make the decisions on those important decisions rather than something that might not be as important to me. And it's, it's like just a t-shirt in their mind. And right. so decision fatigue is real. So any, you're right. Anything you can automate where you're, it's just, or delegate, it's someone else's decision and not yours, frees up that brain capacity. Yeah. And you don't have to, whether you realize it or not, you're mentally keeping a little checklist in the mm -hmm. back of your brain of the stuff that you like mm -hmm. have to do. And if you don't have to worry about it, oh my word, it's so nice. Like the greatest thing was when I got rid of payroll, like it was something that I had to do like every Monday morning. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Like it doesn't take that long. It only takes me 15 minutes, but you know, when I got rid of that, mm -hmm. oh my word, oh, it was so, so nice good. to just Never think about it. <laughs> Just well, I remember employees are going to get paid. <laughs> a couple of years ago, my husband and I were planning a housewarming party for ourselves. And he's like, okay, I need to order a keg. What kind of beer do you want? I'm like, and I remember saying, I don't care. I just want you to decide so I don't have to. And he was like, oh, okay. dude, did he get like PBR or something? No, no, he, he oh, no, no, no. He's good with beer. We're okay, good. We're good with beer. No, he got okay. a very nice IPA. So okay. <laughs> it was okay. But it was just, I just remember feeling so, it was a simple decision. What keg of beer to get, right? Not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, yet it was stressing me out. And so I delegated to him. I empowered him to make the decision. And I felt so much better. because I tr And I trusted him to make a good decision because I know he's not going to go buy PBR or Ice House. Right. <laughs> And so it, it does feel good when you get those things off your plate. Oh, it's just like sometimes a weight is lifted off your shoulders, even if it's a small thing. Well, and a lot of people, somebody said this to me, I think like two or three weeks ago, and it hit me square between the eyes. You know, you're actually doing a disservice to your clients if you are using your mental capacity to do all those little things, mm -hmm. because you could be serving and helping more people in your superpower, in your zone of genius. Right. right? right. So like for you, you're amazing at helping people find money and mm -hmm. streamline their businesses and all that. So if you were to go build a website, mm -hmm. that's actually like a disservice because that's yeah. not your zone of genius. And most people don't even think of it like that. And then when somebody said that to me, I was like, holy cow, that makes so much sense. Yes, you are exactly right. Like today I was on a call with a potential client and they needed some legal services. I'm like, I'm not a lawyer. I can tell you who to call, who can take good care of you. And I'm happy to make the introduction. I am doing you a disservice by giving you legal advice and probably getting myself in trouble by giving you legal advice because not my zone of genius. I don't have the credentials to back that up. I just know really good people who can help you. And that's why, is how does networking play into what you do? Because oh networking is so important to help people find the right people for whatever zone of genius they need. Yeah, honestly, 
this business got built completely on accident through networking. Mm -hmm. Um, because I just started meeting, somebody challenged me to do, um, 10 virtual coffees a week when I first started, right? So 15 minutes, meet with two people a day, just get to know them, Mm -hmm. just talk to them, find out what they're doing before I knew it. And, and let's say 70% of them were junk, right? Right. They, They probably were right. It was a waste of time, right? Because it did, it wasn't a fit. Air quote, but waste that, of time. Gotcha. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, um, it wasn't a waste of time because that 30% that I made connections with, holy cow, we built so many like joint ventures and swap mm-hmm. stuff back and forth and just all the masterminds and brain things that happen. Like it was crazy. Like now I have this Rolodex, right. Mm-hmm. And I can just like basically get on Facebook messenger and be and like, ping my friend who that's their genius and be like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Can we book a call? And obviously I want to pay them for their time, but I know exactly where to go to get the answer. Yeah. It's like Henry Ford, right? When Mm -hmm. like he said that his job was to hire a whole, a network with a whole bunch of people who were a lot smarter than him so that he didn't have to do it. He just said, okay, here, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And I think the funny story was, um, he, they wanted to interview him. And he said, the only way that I will interview you is if I'm allowed to use my phone and call whoever I want. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay. And, uh, so they did. And every single question that they ask him, he would call somebody in his, in his business and be like, Mm -hmm. what's the answer to this? What's the answer to this? And they're like, well, you're cheating. You don't know anything. He's like, that's not cheating. I'm being very smart because I know where my zone of genius is. Right. And so he had built like that network and the, the, honestly, my business would have never happened without networking. Yeah. Never happened. Tremendous. I've done a little rabbit trail there, but that's okay. Cause I love networking too. I'm a little bit of a networking junkie. Um, I, I just, I, I love it. And I actually head up a Minneapolis chapter of a big networking group that just started this year. So I'll put a link in the show notes for that, for any of you Minneapolis entrepreneurs who might be listening. So, all right, let, let's talk about the nitty gritty of outsourcing and automating and delegating. Like if someone is brand new to it and says, all right, I know I need to get some stuff off my plate. I don't know where to start. Yeah. Where do they start? Yeah. So I get this question all the time. So I actually made a little tool to awesome. answer this for everybody. So um, if you go to the website, awesome outsourcing dash awesomeoutsourcing.com slash task hyphen discovery. Mm-hmm. It will take you to a little Excel spreadsheet with three videos. And what I do is I have you take inventory of every single thing that you do for an entire week. And we're going to put what it is, how much time it took and basically what department, right? Is it admin work? Is it graphic design? Is it web design? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Then at the end of the week, Um, we're going to go through and we're going to like tally that up and we're going to ask ourselves, could a piece of software do this? Mm -hmm. Could another human do this? Or do I physically have to do this? And one of those videos, I actually, uh, twist the way that you look at things. Um, because so many times we're like, oh no, I have to do that. Oh no, I have to do that. Okay. So the question becomes, and and people laugh at me when I, well, they actually, they get shocked when I say this, but it brings my point home. If you were going to get hit with a Mack truck tomorrow Mm -hmm. and you knew that you were, that was it. And you had to download that information into somebody else that day, Mm -hmm. how would you do it? And excuse me, Einstein said, you know, uh, if you don't know the answer, right never go to bed without asking your brain a question. And I didn't get the quote exactly right. But what happens is as we're rolling it around, like, you know, how in the world would I hand my email off to somebody else? Nobody knows how to answer it in my brain, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Your brain comes up with ways to partially get rid of part of it. Like, for example, let's, let's, let's take that email, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a friend, Ian, and Ian's actually my mentor. He's the person that taught me how to delegate so well. And what he does is he has his virtual assistant go into his email and basically make a bullet point of every email and what they need. Okay. They send that to Ian. Ian then responds to each person and says, okay, book an appointment with Jack for Tuesday. Uh, Please respond this to Jane, right? Mm -hmm. And he gives them the exact words. 
and it's in a video. So he doesn't have to type any of that out. So he can go through and do all of his email. It's in his exact voice oh. saying exactly what needs to be done. It takes him five minutes. And so instead of spending an hour and a half on email three times a day, just checking it, mm -hmm. he now spends a, at most 10 minutes and he's done for the day. And so nobody knows what's inside of his, his, his brain, but somebody else can um, organize it and then type it out for him. Okay. And so that's anyway, sorry, that back to the task discovery list. That's, that's, I give you all kinds of different examples to like tweak the way that you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, and so by the end of the week, exactly which tasks to get rid of first. Wonderful. That's brilliant. And I love how you take such an organized approach to it. It's not just willy nilly. I think I need this off my plate. I think I need that off my plate. Like, no, you have a system behind it to help you identify what you really need to be focusing on and what can go somewhere else. So can I take it one step further? Absolutely. Okay. So the cool part is, is people are like, okay, now I have my list. Now what? Right. Mm -hmm. Because 95% of people that I run into don't have standard operating procedures. Right. And they don't because they're overwhelmed. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. I can't make this like document, right? You don't have to, here's the secret. So take your first task, right? And you're going to do that task anyway. Hit record and talk me through it. Mm -hmm. Talk me through every decision, every step, point here, click here, do this. I'm picking this graphic because of this, right? all those little micro decisions that you're making, just talk them through. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take that video and you're going to actually give it to your VA and say, you create an SOP from this. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is your VA will actually naturally train themselves yeah. and create the document for you. That's step by step. That's brilliant. I love it. That makes so much sense. I, I wish I thought of that. <laughs> It's, and I think people get hung up because they're like, oh my gosh, it has to be like, you know, a dot one dot one, one, one. Right. And like, it, if you look at my SOPs, they're very organized. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's just a word document with like screenshots and step-by-step -step bullet points. Mm -hmm. Do here, go, go here, click this. And the idea is all an SOP is you should be able, sorry, SOP stands for standard operating procedure for anybody who's, um, you should be able to take that document and hand it to a complete stranger mm -hmm. and they should be able to duplicate it exactly as you did. Right. And so we do that through video and then making somebody else make the document. And so then you've Brilliant. recorded it forever. You'll never have to train for that task ever again, ever. Brilliant. I love it. Genius. Good. And that's the funny part is, is when I work with people, mm -hmm. um, when they hire us to, to be VAs, I, I have them record these videos and they squirm right? They absolutely squirm because they're, at, but my job is to like pin them down and say, no, we are not taking this task until you record a video for us. Because then what we do is my team goes through and we make the SOPs for them. Right. And then we hand them this nice, neat little package. And we're like, here you go. You never have to train again. Awesome. We know exactly what we're doing. And the, and what's so funny is by the end of it, they like have this sigh of relief. They're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. But I think we get imposter syndrome because we're like, oh my gosh, I know what I do, but I can't explain what I do to somebody else. And, you know, it's not going to make any sense. And I'm going to sound dumb. And what happens if I hiccup on camera? Like, yeah, nobody cares. No one cares. <laughs> it's okay. it's just, we're just, it's just for the sake of we're getting it down on paper. That's yep. brilliant. All right. So now in your checklist of, of helping people determine what they can outsource, do you have things both for like the business person or entrepreneur and things like around the house that you can outsource? Like as parents, I know parents are always like, I'm so busy doing all the things. How do we get some things off the plates of parents? Yeah, so um, I absolutely on that list tell you to do both personal and business Okay. because time is time. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter, right? So right. Um, back to same example, um, I should never mow my own grass. I know that sounds ridiculous because the lawnmower is right there and I could go outside and I could get it done in like mm -hmm. 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I have a really small yard, but the simple fact that I have to like schedule time, go out, it's more brain power. It's that brain mm -hmm. power thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was actually just talking to a chiropractor and she has this awesomely successful, um, business in Arizona and she's a power lifter. And so, so she's both a chiropractor mm -hmm. and power lifter. So she was spending 
I bet five hours doing meal prep Okay. because she's a very clean eater, right? Lots of protein, lots of, and I said to her, I said, what if you didn't have to do that? And she just mm-hmm. like sighed. She's like, oh my gosh, you have no idea. And mm-hmm. I was like, there are like a bazillion services out right. there that will do, that'll mail it to you pre-packaged. Yeah. Like you should absolutely be getting that off of your plate. Same thing with house cleaning, same thing mm-hmm. with um, uh, mowing your grass, um, all like uh, annual maintenance, right? Mm-hmm. On, on on the house. Like you guys, you, you shouldn't be doing any of that. But like we think about it and we're like, oh, you know, um, I, I think we think of it as, you know, I'm not that special. It's okay. I can clean my own house, but it, it's really not about that. Mm-hmm. It's really about what we talked about earlier, like your right. time and your brain capacity. Yeah. And if you can get something off your plate so that you can even just go do your self care or just read a <sighs> book, enjoy a nice glass of wine with your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend, or have a yep. nice dinner with your kids, it's worth it. Yep. Yep. And actually, it's funny that you brought that up because mm-hmm. when I was talking to the, the chiropractor, she, she has a little girl mm-hmm. and she was spending so much time going to the basketball games, making mm-hmm. sure clean and, you know, all that stuff. And um, that she hadn't had a date night in like two years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh. And she had two admins who were just sitting at the desk, like, you know, uh, they were looking for things to do. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, ask them if they would be willing every Friday night to to book a restaurant and just take two hours. And guess what? That's date night yep. time, you know? And then, you know, we, we ended up finding in an hour, 15 hours for her. Wonderful. And we didn't have to add anything. Like it was using the resources that she already had. We just shipped some balls around. Mm-hmm. And uh, it. it's, it's amazing how people like, yeah once we get them starting thinking that way Mm -hmm. they're like oh yeah I could do this oh yeah I could do this and the light bulb goes off you know and one of my little secrets for parents who are looking for more time hire your kids to do it hire your kids to I mean we so my kids there's some things that they are just expected to do that's part of living in the house right there's other things if they want to earn extra money that they can do that are above and beyond the, their normal level of chores, let's put it. And so I haven't, unlo- well, I don't have a dishwasher right now because I'm living in an RV. Yet before that, I haven't unloaded the dishwasher in like two years. Um, nice. I do I do cut the grass because that's therapeutic for me. That's like, I, that's my clear my head time. I, the kids clean the bathroom. That's a valid reason. That's, that's a valid not reason. A... Yeah, that's not because yeah. I have to. The kids do their laundry. The kids clean their rooms. The kids clean the bathroom. And we're starting to have them babysit and kind of help each other with homework. That frees up more of my time. So I still spend time with the kids. It's just in a different capacity. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Another question I bet you get a lot is how do I find a VA or how do I go start my search to find somebody to help me out? Yeah. So the place that I particularly go, which isn't the right answer for everybody, but for me personally, because of the team that I'm trying to build and my mission, I always hire out of the Philippines. Um, If it were going to be super specific coding, um, I would probably go to like Romania uh, for that. But um, 90% of the stuff you can get done in the Philippines by super qualified people. And the reason I picked the uh, Philippines is a couple of reasons. A, um, they're, uh, I don't want to say legal language. Um, they basically have two languages and the second one is English. So if you go inside of a hospital or inside of a courtroom or, um, inside of a school, they're speaking English. And so they are very familiar Um, Mm -hmm. with the English language. But in addition to that, they're also very immersed in our culture. So just like, you know, um, they're watching the exact same movies that we're watching. Mm -hmm. They know exactly who LeBron James are. LeBron James is. Um, The funny part is, is they think we all live like Kim Kardashian and that's hilarious. But, um, (laughs) but, uh, but so they already kind of know our slang. They know our our culture, right? Then, um, they're also super like team oriented and they're very family oriented. And so, so for me, it's a super awesome place. Um, and I just go to honestly, to a job board there. That's mm-hmm. the same thing as like career builder or monster in the United States. And it's called onlinejobs.ph. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where I do like 99% of my hiring. 
Um, and I have a couple of like tests that I put them through because it is crazy. Mm -hmm. You will put an application out for a virtual assistant and in 72 hours, you'll have 200 applications. Wow. I kid you not. Wow. So yeah. Interesting. And I'm assuming people can just get in touch with you if they need help with this as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, uh, I, I love it when I'm able to, to help solve that. Some people are like, you know what, Michelle, that's great that you're really good at that. I don't want to learn that skill. I just want you to go find them for me. Um, and so absolutely we 100,000% love doing that for people. In fact, we do it for Carmen. Yes, um, do. yeah, but, uh, but if you wanted to try to do it on your own, that's where I would go. That's great. So Michelle, any final tips about outsourcing, automating, or delegating tasks that people might have? Honestly, the best place that you could go would be to check out my website. Um, there it's awesomeoutsourcing.com. And you'll see a tab that's called resources. And I have a ton of information on there on how I automate my business. Um, also there's a blog and I have a bunch of information on how to get started, um, being a virtual, uh, delegating to a virtual assistant and all that good fun stuff. So that is an awesome resource. Uh, the other thing you can do is just reach out and get in touch with me and I'll try and point you in the right direction. Michelle, thank you so much for being here again. You have just a wonderful story. I love how you took a, you know, a lemon that life gave you and turned it into this awesome business that is just blossoming and helping out a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. So this is Carmen Ventrucci with another episode of the Ruby Road Stage Tour podcast. Join us on our next episode where we interview other interesting people who are following their road. And be sure to check out my website at www.truesisulife.com. Thank you. See you next time. Mm -hmm. So have the kids bring a value. I'm about to be video bombed. <laughs> she's circling the, she's trying to figure out how to get in. I'll lock the doors. <laughs> Hold on. Reinforcements. Reinforcements. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dad. Sorry about this. Yeah, Drew. Where is he? Oh my gosh, my nephew listens to that all the time. She loves it. She loves it. She can watch that all day. No. Oh, now she knows. She knows I texted Daddy, so now she. <laughs> he like he like dances in front of the. He's like one yeah. and a half, and mm -hmm. he like dances in front of the TV. I don't TV. understand the the like the psychology. Well, but like some of these kids shows, it's just like it's just this one simple movement, and the kids are like, "Oh my gosh, I love it! It's the, it's the greatest thing ever!" <laughs> and the adults are all like, "Oh my gosh!" Right? Stop. They're like, "If I have to listen to Baby Shark one more time." Oh. <laughs> no, not the Baby Shark. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on this episode of the Ruby Road. Make sure to click that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and just give it a thumbs up. Share it with your family and friends, and pray for our adventure. See you in the next episode. Bye.